Hello, everybody. Tim here, and uh, I'm with... Maggie. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about a few different things today. Um, first of which is going to be our favorite movie of 2017 so far, and our least favorite movie of 2017 so far. Um, and there's a couple other things up on the docket, uh, but yeah, this is just gonna be, like, another, uh, random Sunday chat, talk, whatever, that we were doing a while back, and, uh, but a lot of people enjoyed our rant <laughs> on, uh, moviegoers are annoying, so we're just gonna... It's still true. But, I mean, it's still true, yes. Yeah, we saw three movies in the last three days, and we've act- we had act- actually had a pretty good experience yeah, the last few a- days. Only at Despicable Me, I had to tell that lady next to me to turn her phone off. Yes, that that did happen. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah. Just speak up. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about um, our best of the year so far. Um, I've got a list here of some that I think are honorable mentions. Um, I don't know which one you're taking, but I'm going to say that... Um, some honorable mentions for me. Or oh, we're doing honorable <laughs> mentions first? And well, I'm then... just saying, like, some honorable mentions are, like, uh, Get Out. Yep, I see your Logan's on that list. Um, yep, Baby Guardians Driver. of the Galaxy, Baby Driver. Um, I really like The Beguiled, which we just yeah, saw this okay. weekend. It's I, not for everyone. I liked it. You have to be a movie geek, basically. Um, John Wick is another honorable oh, yes. mention for me. Wonder Woman, I see that. In yep, the... um... But what is your favorite movie of 2017 so far? Based on this list I see here, we're going to have the same favorite movie of 2017 so far. Unless you're going to pick something else. I might be tricky. Well, that's... Oh, Alien's not on this list. Why is that? Well, I'm going to say Beauty and the Beast is my favorite movie of 2017 so far. I just... Tell me about it. I'm just... Just so encapsulated in the nostalgia of the film (laughs) that I can't not pick it. I've seen yeah. it so many times already yeah. this year and I think we've seen it the same amount of times. No, you, I think you've seen it one more than me. Well, even still. We've seen it a lot. We've seen it a lot. And the music is great. The old songs and the original songs, the acting is great. It's a beautiful movie to watch. So, yeah. I yeah. Love it. I okay, so here's yeah, I I echo everything that you said about the movie. Um I would say that there are, like, a few, like, nitty-picky problems I have with the movie. Oh, which of course. I, I'm which not saying I, it's perfect, no, but it's my favorite but it, movie. It's, yeah, and it's not, like, the best movie of the year. No. But I would say that it also is my favorite movie of the year so yes. far. But for the sake of being different. Yes. And the sake of uh, talking about a bunch of different movies in this video, I'm going to go with... Do you know what I'm going to go with? Well, I feel like you're going to go with Alien. Uh, no, I really like Alien, okay. but I don't love Alien Covenant. I, I really like a lot of things about it. Right. Um, but there are a couple, like, longer moments in that movie, like 15, 20-minute moments that I'm just like... Like all those times I fell asleep the second time. Exactly. <laughs> like, um, whereas, like, in a movie like... And this isn't what I'm picking, but in a movie like Guardians or in a movie like Beauty and the Beast... Hey, I slept through Guardians. Hey, but I don't think there's dull. For me, there's no dull moments in those movies. Like it's pretty. It, the the pacing is pretty good and pretty steady. Um, but for me, I'm gonna actually choose a movie that nobody saw. What it comes at night. It comes at night. It comes. He's at, a film nerd. It comes at night was so good. I mean, it was, okay. it was so good. Was okay. So here's the thing, though. I didn't see any of the marketing for it comes at night. I saw the one trailer, the one with the door. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about it, other than that it's a movie by A twenty four, and that it was, um, you know, kind of like a horror thriller. Not horror. But it's not, yeah. Well, once I was watching it, it was easy for me to, like, adjust my expectations because I didn't have any expectations going into it other than I've heard good things about this movie. Um, So I really enjoyed that movie. Joel Edgerton 
Well, Joel Edgerton is like a guy. Is bananas. Yeah. I mean, He's yeah. so good. Yeah. He's so good in the movie. And the whole cast is really, really good. And it's really tight. It's like 90 minutes long. Yeah. If it would have been any longer, it would have been too long. Um, and yeah, she was right. I'm a film nerd. So like all of the different um, aspect ratio shifts during the dream sequences, like the way that the dream sequences and the real life sequences uh, swapped for me. Um, I really enjoyed it. So if you haven't seen It Comes at Night and you like thrillers yeah. or even post no, it's a great thrill. It's a great thriller and it is a great post apocalyptic post apocalyptic oh, man, movie. You can speak. Um, but it is not a horror movie. So if, but if you go into it with those expectations, I think you'll be better off. Yeah, if you haven't seen the movie and you also haven't seen any marketing or anything, just Watch it on VOD or on like Netflix or something once it comes out. Yeah. Um, because it's I don't think it's in theaters anymore. No. Um, it was pretty short lived because nobody went and see, saw it and the people who did see it were complaining. So, um, but it is really good. So I highly recommend going yeah. to see that. Well, pretty much everything Joel Edgerton touches turns to gold. It's also a great like family drama too. Like there's a lot of like family dynamic that is going on in both of the main families mm-hmm. in the movie. Um, and like, again, I don't want to like shit on Beauty and the Beast because to, I, I really do believe that that is my favorite movie of the year, but I think It Comes at Night is the best made mm-hmm. film of the year. But in Beauty and the Beast, I don't get any like rich family dynamic out of that movie. Like what are you I'm talking about, but you I'm, learn how the beast became so. Oh, angry, okay. And yeah. You learned yeah. That mm-hmm. was so sad and alone. But that didn't give me an emotional reaction. Like it comes at night did the things that gave me an emotional reaction in beauty and the beast was the music. Yeah. But mostly. It explained to you why he was so sad in days in the sun. Why are you making me argue that beauty and the know. beast <laughs> isn't like, why are you doing this to me? Um, so anyway, that's our, those are our best. So we got Beauty and the Beast mm-hmm. and it comes at night. Um, so now let's, let's dip into something a little more nasty, uh, <laughs> which is the worst films of 2017 so far. Um, can you just like name some Maggie right off the bat yeah. that you can think of? Yeah. So Bye Bye Man and 47 Meters Down. I named those two first because those are the two that we walked out of so far this year. And then Are those the only two we've walked out of? Yeah. Well, there you go. And then there's, yeah, because I was looking at how I rated them. So The Circle, Pirates, King Arthur, Baywatch. Um, what are you choosing What am I, what am I as choosing? your worst of the year? Baywatch. 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 Tell me about it. So basically, I don't know. I wanted to have fun and I didn't. And I'm kind of salty about it. And like, the beginning was okay. Like, like the opening sequence, like you knew what you were getting into. And like, that's fine. But then the ending just got like so out of control. And I just couldn't take any of it seriously. Yeah. And I feel like there was like, I thought like the acting was good, but it was just like, kind of over the top, and maybe, well, the maybe ri- that the was writing, the point. The writing was bad, too. Right, and... It was trying to be 21 and 22 Jump Street without the good humor to back it yeah, up. Yeah, I just... I, it hurts me to think about it. And, you know, like, I didn't love that movie, but it, it's not in, like, my top... I don't think it's going to be in my top ten worst of the year. I mean, at the eventually end of the year. it probably won't, but like thinking if, about it now, that's talking, always yeah. the one that comes to the front of my mind. If we're talking about the worst so far, and this is the beginning of July, obviously, so we're officially halfway Maybe. through the year, um, which is crazy, by the way. Um, so here's my five. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but like, I'll get to my number one here, but. Um, I'll throw out the Bye Bye Man and 47 Meters Down because, yes, we walked out of them. I'm also going to give King Arthur a shout out. Yeah, that was pretty terrible. I, okay, I don't like Guy Ritchie. And I, I the only Guy Ritchie movie I can watch and not want to bang my head up against a wall is maybe Snatch. Um, which I don't, I don't think you've e- even seen. Have you seen Snatch? No, but I like Sherlock and I like um, Man from Uncle. Yeah, so. and I don't I don't like any of those movies. And it's not that I like dis like I I mean I it's know his I just style. I'm just not a fan of the style. Um, so I really did not care for King Arthur. Um, Pirates is a travesty against all things. <laughs> 
He hated Pirates more than I hated Pirates. Pirates is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Pirates 5. I mean... It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Okay, but the fourth one was definitely worse than this one. It's close. It's not that close. It's close. It's close. I can say that. Um, but you know, you know what was worse than Pirates? The Circle. The Circle, starring <laughs> that America's is my lowest Tom rated Hanks. Movie this the year. Circle sucked. Yeah, it was not good. And if I hadn't walked out of Bye Bye Man, I would say Bye Bye Man is the worst. But you can't count it because we left. But we left. Um, the, the, but, uh, the worst movie that I've seen this year that I watch from beginning to end in a theater is definitely The Circle. Circle was bad. Poor Emma, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks was bad in the movie. Emma Watson was Emma bad. Emma Watson was bad in the movie. The writing was bad. It was bad. Eller Coltrane was bad. Who's he? Boyhood. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Remember, he was was even in it. The directing was bad. Everything was bad. Patton Oswalt was bad. Like, everything about that movie just smelled. Yeah. It was just stinky. Yeah. It was just bad. And that's all I could say. It's like, it's funny how in my least favorite movie of the year, Emma Watson is the star. I know, but she's also the star of my favorite movie of the year. So, there you go. Well, I mean, she's not trying to do a stupid American American accent accent. in Beauty and the Beast. Like... Oh, boy. Whoo. Yeah. So, yeah, those are our best and worst. So I've got uh, It Comes at Night and then The Circle and Maggie's picking uh, Beauty and the Beast and Baywatch. So those are pretty solid picks, Mm -hmm. I would say. I would like to, once again, just give a shout out to, like, Logan. Oh, yeah. And to John Wick and Lego Batman and these movies that I really did love. Um, And, you know, like, we're seeing Spider-Man in a few days. I'm really excited, which actually kind of leads us into what we're going to talk about next, which is uh, our most anticipated movies for the rest of the year. Um, so yeah, Spider-Man. Tim's really excited about Spider-Man. I'm really excited about Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man Homecoming is hopefully going to be good. It's getting really good reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to let that sway me, though. Um, I'm just having no expectations, pretty much. Well, the last two Marvel movies you liked, right? If you Guardians t- and Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange, yeah. Well, that, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Well, then what are you talking about? Why? What's wrong with key having expectations? Because Sony exists. Yeah, that's true. I can run with so, that. So, <laughs> I'm yeah. just like, I know all these people are really liking it, and I'm sure I'm probably going to enjoy it, but I just, I'm not going to freak out and until get we all see excited it. until we see it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, Planet of the Apes, though. I'm, like, way extremely excited for that. (laughs) Yeah, and, you know, War for the Planet of the Apes is, like, if, and, again, right now it has, like, a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm sure I will love it. Um, But if I love it and give it, like, a a 4.5 to a 5 out of 5, it's going to be, like, one of the best trilogies ever. It's going to be up there with, like, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. Um, Batman? Yeah, Dark Knight trilogy. Like, it's the it it's going to be great, I I'm hope. Excited. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. But, yeah, that's Planet of the Apes. What else is coming out that you're excited Atomic for? Atomic Blonde. That comes out at the end of July. Atomic. Yeah, that looks good. I'm excited for that. We're actually going to see that in a couple weeks mm-hmm. before... Mm-hmm. Before also it comes in out. July is Dunkirk, which is a beautiful looking film. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I know. well you you've seen some of the. Trailers. I've seen a trailer. He's trying not to watch the trailers. He like closed his eyes yesterday when the trailer was playing in the theater. I'm sorry that I would like to be surprised. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, August. What's coming out in August? That's exciting. When does the Emoji movie come Shut out? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's if we're if we're talking about movies that I'm excited for. We gotta mention the Emoji movie. That's the end of July. Soon. It's soon. I. <laughs> Don't know of anything in August that's exciting. September's got the Dark Tower. Um, I don't. No, you know what I am excited for in August? The Glass Castle. You right. That Glass looks Glass. really good, and it's from the director of uh, Short Term Twelve, which is one of the most underrated movies of all time. I've never even heard of that. I'm giving her a look. <laughs> um, it's a really really good movie. Um, it's on Netflix. I don't have Netflix. You're an American woman. 
You should have Netflix. I'm sorry, I'm broke. Um, and The Big Sick, we're looking oh, yes. forward to. That just came out. We haven't yep. seen it yet. Yep. Uh, we're probably going to see that next week. Looking forward to that. I'm also really looking forward to a ghost story, which Maggie is yep. looking at me now. I think a ghost story looks awesome. I think everything from the visual style to the cinematography to the acting um, looks top notch. And I am a fan of Casey Affleck. I do like Casey I'm a Affleck. fan of Rooney Mara. Okay. I'm a fan of A24. I'm gonna go. I'm 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 a fan of ghost stories, so I'm gonna see a ghost story. Like I'm very excited for it. Yeah. Um, and then if we're talking like towards the end of the year here, you know what else is coming out this year, right? Lots of things. Are we talking about Star Wars? Are we talking about Thor? Are we talking about Justice League? I was gonna say Coco. Oh yeah, duh. But all of those movies, yes, like, uh, yeah, Star Wars is well, it's Star Wars. Force Awakens was my favorite movie of 2015. Um, I'm a big, 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 big nerd, but I do not uh, look past the garbage, which is why everybody knows my feelings about Rogue One, um, about how I, oh my god, it's so good. Oh my god, it's okay. Oh, uh, I don't like this movie anymore. <laughs> like, uh, not a big fan of Rogue One, but. I'm very looking forward to The Last Jedi because um, I'm a big Ryan Johnson fan. I really, really, really like Looper. Um, so I'm looking forward to Star Wars. And then, like you said, Thor and Justice League. Um, had you asked me two months ago my thoughts on Justice League, I would have said... Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's going to be a movie. But then Wonder Woman happened. Yeah, and Wonder Woman came out. And now I'm a little more excited for uh, Justice League. Maybe not because of um, what you might think. Like, I was originally excited more for, like, Ezra Miller's Flash, I think, mm -hmm. actually looks pretty good. He does. Even though I'm a big fan of the TV show. Um, and then I would have said Bruce Wayne, um, Ben Affleck, obviously. But now it's all about yeah. Wonder Woman. And I'm fine with that. If they reshoot some of this movie with Joss Whedon, which is what's happening, mm -hmm. um, and they make it a little more Wonder Woman-centric, I'm totally cool with that. As long as they don't undermine Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne. Yeah. That's how I feel about or that. Or, like, the Justice League in general. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, they kind of did that in Avengers, though. I mean, like, everybody got their moment, but it was it was Iron Man and Cap, pretty Yeah, much. I guess. You know, like... Yeah. But anyway, um... Yeah, and then Thor? Thor. Thor's Love good. the trailer. Trailer's good. Trailer's great. A lot of people are complaining that it looks like Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't care. That's fine with me. Yeah, I don't care at all. Uh, I love Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. And I like, uh... I, I'm gonna... I always butcher his name. Uh, it's like Taika Waititi, I think is how you pronounce his name. The director. Oh. He did uh, What We Do in the Shadows and Hunt for the Wilder People. I'm, I'm a fan of his... So I'm excited to see what he'll bring to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the difference, I think, between, like, a Zack Snyder and a Taika Waititi, for example, is you can tell that this guy directing this Thor movie is passionate about Thor. He's talked about it. Like, he, right. he, like, he references it and he talks about it in his interviews. James Gunn is passionate about Guardians. Well, and Patty Jenkins is passionate about Wonder Woman. About Wonder Woman. Um, well, not just, like, passionate about the project they're working for. I'm talking about prior to even being hired, um, they're right. like, I love these characters, let me make this movie. Uh, the I think the biggest example is um, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool. Yeah. Like, that's just, like, that is the prime example there. And I just don't get that feeling with, like, Justice League. Yeah. So I hope that that does happen and maybe Joss's influence can come a little bit into the movie more. But, yep. um, yeah. And then, anyway, back to what I was originally going to talk about. Coco! Coco! Talk about Coco. I'm very excited. I think it looks beautiful. And, yeah. I, I'm so excited. It's the Book of Life 2, though, right? No, it's not the Book of Life 2. It's going to be so much better than the Book of Life. I liked the Book and of Life. And I think the 3D is going to be dope, and I can't wait. Yeah, we saw the trailer in 3D the other gorgeous. day. It was It was pretty cool. And that's the thing about Pixar is, like, I don't understand. I didn't even mention Cars 3 in my worst of the oh, year. Oh, yeah, we forgot about Cars Shit, 3. Shit, Cars 3 sucked. 
Cursor is the worst. <laughs> like, ugh. Like, hang me. But anyway, um, yeah, Coco looks really good. And that's what's like amazes me about Pixar is how they can put out movies like Inside Out mm-hmm. and in the same year do a good dinosaur. What's wrong with I don't understand why you hate the good dinosaur. The good do- dinosaur is a bad movie. You're a bad movie. I mean, that might be true, but, um, like, Inside Out's great. I liked Finding Dory. Yeah. And then they just, like, do a Cars. It's well, like, why? They gotta fund their passion projects. Toy Story 4 is coming soon. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other movies coming out this year you're looking Kingsman. forward to? Kingsman. Oh, Kingsman, holy Kingsman, shit, Kingsman. Kingsman. Kingsman, the uh, Golden, Golden Circle, Circle is what it's called, I'm correct? I'm so excited. I am excited for Kingsman. I want to know what's going on with Colin Farrell. Not Colin Farrell. Colin Firth. Colin Firth. Shut up. <laughs> There's a difference. I can't edit this. That's fine. <laughs> I, I mean, I could, but I don't want to. So, uh, yeah, Colin Firth, I want to know what's going on with him. I um, like the theory that, like, it's not him. It's, like... The villain, and he's doing like a Mission Impossible thing where he has. He's like, gonna pull the, off the mask. Right. That be I. I would enjoy that. Yeah, because I really there's no way that he can be alive. Like there's no way. But the other the other thing you have to think about too is the Kingsman is so ridiculous to begin with. But it's so good. I know, and that's what I'm saying. So if they find a ridiculous good way to make him actually be, be alive, alive, I'd probably buy into it. I just hope this isn't a kick ass two situation. Where Kick-Ass was so good, but then Kick-Ass 2 was like, meh. Um, but Matthew Vaughn is directing this movie, and he did not direct Kick-Ass 2. So that is a, a little different of a situation, I hope. Yeah. Um, you know what else I'm looking forward to, actually, is It. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks really scary. And I'm actually kind of into um, the Annabelle creation thing. Gross. Mostly because The Conjuring 2 was so good, and I know that it's not... The same, I know it's not James Wan directing or anything, but it's, uh, I believe his name is Dan Sandberg or something like that, and he directed Lights Out, and I thought Lights Out was oh, yeah, really I, good. It was okay. I thought Lights Out was a really good movie. Well, you didn't watch it. I did not. I was very afraid. Your eyes were closed. Many of the, we should watch that we today. Should. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, other movies I'm looking forward to, La La Land 2, Revenge of the Oscars. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I forgot we watched that trailer. How many <laughs> jokes do you think they're going to make it next year? Because Jimmy um, Jimmy Kimmel's hosting the Oscars again. Is he really? Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Oh, that was officially announced, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? By the Academy, which is crazy that they already announced it that early. Yeah. Because they usually announce it, like, December, January. Or, like, no, because the show's in February. February. So they announce it, like, November, December. But, um... Yeah, it's confirmed. Like, Jimmy Kimmel's Back? hosting the Oscars again. Like, how many jokes do you think they're going to make about the La La Land Moonlight thing? Like a bajillion. Like a bajillion. Like, it's all going to be Trump jokes and La La Land jokes. Yep. And good thing that, um, like, most of the La La Land cast, as of now, doesn't have anything Oscar-worthy <laughs> to be angry about at the Oscars. Like because this if they're coming, yeah, because I'm saying if they're sitting there in the front row and then uh, does Blade Runner come up this year? That's not gonna be an Oscar. No, movie. I know, but I'm just I'm trying to think. Of I think that might be the only the only uh, although Emma Stone um, and Steve Carell, which is another movie I'm looking forward to, Battle of the Sexes actually. Um, do do you even film? No. Do you even so Emma Stone? That'll that'll be a good vehicle for her, um, and then you know Brie Larson will. I'm sure be nominated for the Glass Castle. I haven't seen the movie, but it looks great. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying, like she's she's pretty great. Um, yeah, but as long as uh, why can't I think of his name? Director of La La Land. Oh, his name's on that poster over there. What poster? The Whiplash poster. Uh, okay, hang on. We can do this. We could put our brains together. The director of such films as Whiplash, <laughs> uh, the youngest. Director Damien Chazelle. Damien Chazelle. Where does it say that? I'm sure it's on there somewhere. It's just too small for us to see. You just remembered though. Yeah. Perfect. You're so much smarter than me. Uh, if Damien Chazelle, good thing he doesn't have a movie this year because if he did, yeah. And like Jimmy Kimmel would just rip him to pieces. 
Probably. Like, which is fine. Like, I thought Jimmy Kimmel was really good hosting the Oscars. Yeah, he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Good tangent. So, uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good Oscar tangent. Yeah. No, and, uh... but really, though, The Greatest Showman looks solid. Oh, yeah! I thought that's what you were re- referencing. La La Land 2, <laughs> Return of the... Or, Revenge. Revenge of the Oscars. Yeah. No, no. No, the only other, uh... The only other big, like, fake sequel I would go for would be, like, Silence 2, Loud, like, <laughs> like Loudness, I don't know. I, I, any Marty movie, which I don't know. I don't think he... No, the next one I believe he is directing is called The Irishman. Oh, yes. Yes, with uh, Robbie D. Yes. Robbie D. All right, guys, well, um, anything else you want to talk about, Maggie? No. No? No. Good. And you know, guys, when we hang up the microphone here, she actually leaves my house. So she like, it's like, okay, thanks for letting me talk for a bit. Bye. And then we don't talk to each other until we get back on the microphone. He's lying to you. No, that's the truth. We probably are going to watch Lights Out now. It's definitely possible. Either that or uh, Go Go Power Rangers. I'd rather die, but Okay. That hurts. All right, guys. Well, if you like listening to us talk about movies for the last 26 minutes, <laughs> uh, hit that like button. Hit subscribe so that you can uh, stay up to date with the latest from me and from Maggie. And uh, let us know if there's anything you want us to uh, talk about. Um, we've got a review coming up here soon for probably what's that one movie called the beguiled um either the beguiled or the house i don't know you want to make me review something make you review it so that i don't have to oh no you're reviewing it what are you talking about anyway guys thanks for listening to us (laughs) ramble uh check out some of the other videos check out that rant we were talking about that 47 meters down rant and check out my review for despicable me three so that you could hear uh my thoughts on the latest minion madness and uh until next time guys have a good one